Linda, we thank you so much for being here. Um, and we just would like just to hear from you a little bit about what you do in the organization, what Genesis Project is all about, and just a testimony of one of the girls that have been touched and impacted by your guys' organization. Hi. Um, thank you so much for welcoming us here. Um, first, I want to go ahead and read this to you really quick so I don't forget anything in my nervousness. Um, so the, the Genesis Project was started by a police officer who actually worked the streets with the girls. And unfortunately, he would be arresting them. And um, in 2006, this deputy, Andy Connor, was out on the streets with the girls and um, asking different girls the, the things that are going on. And after, after months, he realized, and the girls coming to him and saying, help me get out of this he realized that this was not something they wanted to be in, which is what most people think. This is what they want, and it is not. They are trapped in this for whatever reason, however it came about. And, um, and unfortunately now, a lot of it is families are selling them. So um, it is getting a lot worse, but God got a hold of Andy's heart and said, you need to do something. You need to stop this help them and so he through a lot of prayer and on his knees um, daily um, the lord brought it to him that he was to open a drop-in center for these girls and that was succeeded uh, we do have a drop-in center for them um, i've been working with them since 2011 and um, what we do is our whole main um, Goal is rescue, restoration, and release. So rescue is immediate shelter. The women arrive at the center to have their basic needs met. This includes food, hygiene, clothing, um, and a pl safe place to rest. Because a lot of them are homeless. It's not like it used to be. Um, now they are homeless. They're actually sleeping outside. And so... They will go all night. They'll have absolutely no rest. They'll have to be with 40 men a night. And so when they come in, they're exhausted. And a lot of them, um, unfortunately, are addicted to drugs. Um, heroin and meth are the biggest ones right now. And so it's not something that's easily kicked. And so um, it takes a long time to help them through all of this. The restoration is the education and rehabilitation. So they go to detox, they go to different organizations that will help them through that. We are there to help them find those resources. Um, we provide counseling, job and life skill classes. That's what I do, I'm a, um, the program developer. And so I help them put programs together to help them get out of this and learn some job skills and life skills. Um, we help them with uh, transportation, medical needs, going to uh, appointments, medical appointments, anything that they have. We have a, a huge, wonderful group of volunteers that will come right along us and help us with that. If we call, they're right there to help. Um, GEDs, we make sure that they can get their GED, and we have had a lot of girls. We have served over 200 in our center. So, um, and the other, the final is release, referrals to safe housing. Currently, the Genesis Project refers to clients to safe house and residential programs through organizations that partner with us. And we have a lot, and we're so thankful for them. Eventually, we would like to have our own safe house. Um, and this is our, our goal, because right now, as even as um, we work each day, we will have girls come in and say, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. Um, and they want out. They want to go to detox. They want to go in a safe place. And there's not enough. It has exploded so much that there is not enough room for these girls. And so we are, our prayer is to be able to have a safe house that hopefully we can, we can house at least 40. Um, so this is our, our main goal and hope that we can be open 24 seven. Um, right now, we're not able to do that. I am right now in the process of, um, I've got a program going where we have just started. 
they will be able to work in the center. So I will be teaching them life skills and work skills. There'll be four jobs available in the center. They will actually get paid. So the owner has decided oh, I'm gonna pay them hourly, but they will work under me and I will teach them different skills so that they can go out into society and have a job. Right now they cannot. They have no references, they have no skills. So they get discouraged and they feel they're not worth anything and they, they wanna quit. We don't want this to happen. We want them to be out there, have confidence. So this is what we're, we're starting now and um, they're excited about it. They will get a, a work reference when they leave and to them that is huge. As I was worshiping with you this morning, I really felt that I was supposed to give you this testimony. We had a 12-year-old girl that came um, from another state. Um, her mother rescued her, bless her heart. Um, she'd been in it for a while, from what I understand, I don't know how long. She rescued her, she brought her up to this area, um, went into a, what they thought was a safe place, did not know that the pimps were in pursuit. They got a hold of them, they beat the girl up very badly, she was into the hospital. Um, the mother fought him off, um, the police came, but she is such a survivor. Her story is horrific. I can't go into it all, but it is horrible. Weeks ago, she came into the center with her mother, and she sat there and she said to us, who is the Lamb of God? Just like that. Who is the Lamb of God? And so we tried to explain to her who the Lamb of God was and gave her the gospel. No foundation in Christ. Um, so she says to me, she goes, can I talk to you in the other room for a minute? And I said, okay. So I take her inside and she said, I have been hearing a voice. And this voice has been calling himself Satan. And he's telling me to pray to him. And if I do pray to him, he will give me all the money that we need to take care of my, my mom and I. And she said, but there's this other voice that keeps saying to me, no, I'm the Lamb of God. I died for you. Two weeks ago, she came to Christ. She is now a child of God. She is in school now. Uh, she just started school. Um, she needs a lot of prayer. As you know, as they say, the sower's parable. Um, there's no foundation. So we need to be praying for her constantly um, that Satan doesn't try and take that away from her. It was just so pathetic this morning when you were singing the Lamb of God because that truly is, um, God is fighting for these girls Amen. and we need to be right alongside of them. Linda, thank you. Um, and we as a church want to give you this check from us and from what we were able to raise for it. And we know that this is just only the beginning. And you guys, go ahead and give her another hand of applause.